Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Spurs Chemo, who has a channel he calls Under No Pressure, is going to explain to us why rockets can't work. Except they do. Warning! Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts, push the monitors back out of punching range, and let's go visit this dumpster fire which is already well developed. Spurs Chemo, usually referred to just as Spurs, is the author of this little gem. Now I want to point out that I in no way have edited any of his video. This is exactly the way it appears on his channel. Let's give a listen, shall we? Newton's Third Law. For every reaction, there is an equal and opposite reaction. General movement requires an object to push off another, such as when we walk, the foot pushes off the ground, when you throw a ball, your hand pushes the ball and the ball pushes your hand. The oar pushes the water, which in turn pushes the oar, and thus the boat. Pushing or pulling involves you or your vehicle applying some force to an external object such as the floor. Let us say that the foot applied 10 newtons. The opposite force will be 10 newtons. However, there are other forces that cause movement that doesn't involve you or your vehicle pushing off an external object. Some examples are as follows. Buoyancy and the density gradient force. Force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration due to relative density. Acceleration due to gravity spurs, not relative density. Relative density isn't a force and it doesn't produce an acceleration. You're trying to sneak in some flurf babble thinking we're not going to notice it. Is approximately 10 meter per square. Is approximately 10 meters per second square. Density applied on a 5 kilogram weight should be 50 newtons. Gravity, you fucking retard! So, if you drop a 5 kilogram weight from your hand from a height, the opposite reaction on your hand would also be 50 newtons. If Newton's third law is applied exactly the way it was in the previous slides regarding walking, throwing, and rowing a boat, when you drop the 5 kilogram object, did you feel that the 50 newtons of force pushing back on your hand. Of course not. That's ridiculous. Well, what you just said is ridiculous. You're not applying a force to the weight. You're simply releasing the weight. If you apply a force to the weight, then you will feel the opposite reaction. Buoyancy is an upward force exerted by fluid that opposes the weight of an immersed object. The following equation states the buoyant force is equal to density times gravitational acceleration times the volume of fluid displaced. <sighs> Let's say we have a jug of water which has a density of 1. Yes, water has a density of 1 kilogram per litre. Focus. Put a container full of air to the bottom of the jug. Container will move to the top. Focus. The volume of the container is 200 milliliters. Come on, man, focus. Using the equation, buoyancy force equation, we get approximately two newtons. Subtract the one newton or force due to density, and you will have a net force of one newton. One newton equates to 100 grams on the scale. For those of us that don't normally work with metric units, one liter is 1,000 cubic centimeters. A milliliter is exactly the same thing as a cubic centimeter. Water, pure water, weighs one gram per cubic centimeter. That's one gram per milliliter, which is the same thing as one kilogram per liter. Spurs got all of the forces exactly correct. Here's a problem. First, didn't you just claim that relative density is what causes these forces? 
In order to get the buoyant force of two newtons, you had to take the volume of water, 200 cubic centimeters, 0.2 liters, and multiply by the acceleration of gravity, which you rounded to 10 meters per second per second. 0.2 times 10 is 2 newtons. You got the answer correct, but you got it using the acceleration of gravity. And you stated the weight of the container in newtons, which already included the acceleration of gravity. So now which way is it, Spurs? Is it relative density that results in weight? Or is it, as we know, the mass of an object multiplied by the acceleration of gravity? And since you used that equation, I assume you must agree with that, correct? Obviously, there has no opposite focus. Obviously, there was no opposite force applied on the scale when the object was released. Of course not, Cletus. The buoyant force was acting on the object before, during, and after the time it was released. Simply releasing it didn't produce an additional force. Likewise, a hot air balloon wouldn't move upwards if the buoyancy force caused an equal and opposite reaction downwards. You're starting to piss me off. A pressure gradient force is the force which results when there is a difference in pressure across a surface. The following is the equation to calculate the pressure gradient force based of difference in pressure and density. You got Travis focus in the damn camera. The driving force for wind is the pressure gradient force. When pressure is different from one location to another, the difference in pressure exists. Now, if, if gas moves due to pressure gradient force calculated to be 10 newton south, is there an opposite force applied of 10 newton north? When the wind blows on the back of your head, did you... When the wind blows on the back of your head, did the air in the front of you push off your face when the air started to move away from you? Obviously not. Think about what you just said. Forces come in pairs. Wind striking in the back of Cletus's head has absolutely no effect whatsoever on the air in front of Cletus's face. The back of Cletus's head provides an opposite reaction to the wind that is striking it. As you saw in the video, the pressure gradient force was strong enough to lift the container, but that force is not seen on the scale. To lift the container, the air movement must apply a force greater than one newton. However, this is not seen on the scale. You can see that the scale never read above 100 grams or more than one newton. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Spurs, you seem to have suck and blow confused. Creating an area of negative pressure above an object sitting on a scale will not cause the object to weigh more. It will cause it to weigh less. If you want the object to weigh more, blow on it. Additionally, free expansion of gas states that gas expanded into a vacuum does no work. How does exhaust from the rocket chamber move outside the rocket chamber? Does the rocket push the gas out like a person throwing a ball? Does gas move out due to gravity, even though it's not a force? Does the gas move out due to buoyancy? Does the gas move out due to pressure gradient force? According to MIT, a rocket in its simplest form is a chamber enclosing the gas under pressure. A small opening in one end of the chamber allows the escape of pressurized gas. Escape into low pressure sounds like pressure gradient force. The exhaust from the rocket chamber moves out of the rocket because of the pressure gradient force. That's a jet engine, not a rocket engine. You know that, right? <clears throat> so what did we learn about pressure gradient force? 
you're still showing a jet engine. See the inlet? Rockets don't have inlets. There is no opposite force because Newton's third law cannot be applied exactly the way it was in the previous slides regarding walking, throwing and rowing a boat. Pressure gradient force comes from potential energy just like density and buoyancy. Now wait a minute Spurs. Potential energy is stored energy and it depends on the relative position of various parts of a system. A spring that's either stretched or compressed has potential energy. An object that's held above the surface of the earth or below the surface of a liquid has potential energy. Density is just density. It doesn't have potential energy. The balloon pushes off the atmosphere. If we put the vacuum hose near the opening of the balloon, the air moves into the hose without much resistance. When the vacuum hose is placed behind the car away from the opening of the balloon, the air meeting the resistance of the atmosphere causes flux in both cases. The vacuum hose is behind the car to remove the illusion, which has appeared that it slowed the car down. As you can see, the balloon can't begin to accelerate nearly as much as when the vacuum gauge was near the balloon open. How about we stop sucking on Evil Knievel with that damn vacuum cleaner? <sighs> This first equation is how NASA says how rockets work. The second equation is the fluid dynamics equation for movement of fluids through a pipe. Spurs, these equations are normally used for piping systems carrying liquids. It'll work great for your garden hose. Why are you trying to shoehorn that into the thrust equation for a rocket engine? This makes absolutely no sense. Similarly, the rocket exhaust which is the fluid which moves through the nozzle pipe. Both equations have velocity, so let us substitute velocity in the NASA equation with what velocity equals in the fluid dynamics equation. Let's just toss in the velocity of a pregnant sea turtle while we're at it. This is the equation you get after substitution. Mass flow rate is equal to density times volumetric flow rate. You can convert volume to mass with density. Volumetric flow rate equals mass flow rate divided by density. Now let us replace volumetric flow rate with mass flow rate divided by density. After substitution, you get 4 times the mass flow rate squared divided by pi, pipe diameter squared and density. There is no longer a need to calculate the exit velocity. This states that mass flow rate is essentially force. This is incorrect. Oh, you've gone way beyond incorrect at this point, partner. I'm not even going to try to untangle the mess you've made. Cleaner, and suck air from a pipe with only one end open, but a small hole on the side of the pipe near the closed end. There is a mass flow rate exiting the pipe, but no force is applied to the pipe. <sighs> the fluid dynamics equation is used in many industries. The fluid dynamics equation is used in many industries. And the NASA equation is used by one or perhaps two industries that are mainly run by the state. So here we are faced with a direct contradiction of what observation and experiment tells us. And while NASA and other institutions tell us, why do people believe NASA perhaps they are allegedly the most prominent scientific community and have no other choice? Why do they lie? Like most people's lies are told to collect money. NASA collects taxpayers' money. NASA, like college students, use his money tuition, which was obtained from the parents to party and perhaps buy the girlfriend a new phone, instead of using the money to pay for school. And as quickly as it began, it simply ended. I'm speechless. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you survived it. Remember kids, when we say how stupid can you be, that isn't a challenge, it's a question. Hey, don't forget to hit those little buttons down there. Click the little bell if you want notifications. Shout out to the Patreons and the PayPals. I really appreciate everything you guys do. And with that, hey Gladys.
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're out of here.